Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of AB in the Films. The moment's here. It's finally here. Really, really bad. I know about the criticism it's been getting. Yes, I looked at Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, I heard from critics. Yes, I've heard from people that, that I work with. They all went to go see it opening night over the weekend. I wanted to wait because I figured it would be pretty crowded, because a lot of people... Oh, people were going to go see this regardless of what the critics were going to say about it. Um, I personally didn't care what the critics said. I, I didn't care. I mean, I heard Rotten Tomatoes gave this 33%. Um, it doesn't matter. But, you know, I'll give you an example. Rotten Tomatoes gave The Hangover Part 2 35%, and I freaking love Hangover Part 2. Hell, they gave the third one 19%, and I love Part 3. So it didn't really matter. So I was going to go see this either way. And the final verdict on this movie is this, because there's been a lot of hype about this movie, particularly when the first Comic-Con trailer came out um, nearly a year ago. There are three things I freaking loved about this movie, and we'll get into the rest later. Let's talk about the things I liked. Number one... Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She is Harley Quinn. Okay, she she is. She did she did such a fantastic job in the like you know how I said when I reviewed Deadpool that Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool? That that's Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. She's that good. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is um the soundtrack. This soundtrack it's like Guardians of the Galaxy. That's how good the soundtrack is in this movie. It's every, almost every rock song from the 70s and the 80s, and even new music from today as well, but there's a lot of classic rock songs throughout this movie, so I was really enjoying that. Uh, so that's, that's the second thing. And the third thing is Jared Leto did not disappoint. He did not disappoint for me. Everything else, I'm not going to say it's bad, but it could have been so much better. There will be spoilers in this review for anyone who hasn't seen it. So if you still want to go see this movie and you haven't seen it yet, go see the movie, then come back and finish this review. David Ayer, I don't know too much of his work. Uh, I can tell he's obviously a comic book fan because he... He didn't, I mean, like, he did his homework. He did some research here. I mean, because I don't know much about the DC Comics, but I grew up watching Batman the Animated Series as a kid, okay, as a little kid. So some of the stuff I saw in this movie took me right back to being a kid again. Okay, so, and we'll get into that in a little bit. The, 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 the problem with this movie is this, because it does have problems. It does. The first act, I think, the well, here's what I think, okay? The way David Ayer constructed this, because every, uh, according to the advertising, a lot of people who worked on this movie are saying, oh, David Ayer, oh, he's fantastic, his writing is just so good. Here's the problem with the writing in this movie. Number one, the first 30 minutes of the movie is just pure exposition, and it shows Amanda Waller, who was played by, played by uh, Viola Davis, who was actually really good in this. I, I, I enjoyed her performance in this. It, constant explanation of each, each criminal, each villain, what their backstory is. And to be honest with you, the backstories were a hell of a lot more interesting than what the movie ended up being. Okay, I was a million more times interested in these flashbacks than I were than I was in what the movie was or what the plan is. So, 
yeah, so the, the, the first 30 minutes, it goes on and on and on, and some parts are interesting, yes. The second and the third act combined, it's just Rick Flagg and, and the Suicide Squad, it's just them walking through the, it's just them walking through Gotham trying to stop what is basically Ghostbusters. That's it. And, guys, by the time we get to the third act and we get to the end, I, I couldn't give a shit about what they were fighting for. I, I could care less. I wasn't into it anymore. I, just, I wasn't interested. Now, some parts uh, still kept me interested. Like I said, Margot Robbie acting as Harley Quinn, and, and I'll mention Will Smith as Deadshot. He was actually really good. He doesn't wear the mask that often in this movie. I was waiting for him to put the mask on, and when he does put it on, I got so hyped... And then he shoots, and then he takes it off. I'm like, what are you doing? Put it back on! Like, come on! You know? So, yeah. Um, and uh, so, so th there's the problem with the movie. This is what I thought Suicide Squad was going to be, okay? Because you watch the trailers, and you hear about it, and, and you get interested in, in about it. Because this is the DC Universe. I mean, I think this is, what, the third film in the DC Universe now? Because Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and now Suicide Squad. Man of Steel I saw, and I hated it. I hated it. I'd rather watch Superman for the Quest for Peace than watch Man of Steel again. And Batman vs. Superman, I didn't want to see, and I still haven't seen it, and I heard it pretty much sucked. Um, but this one I was interested in. And I think this is the first time we see uh, this group of villains. Like, I think this is the first live-action movie we've ever seen, you know, the relationship between the Joker and Harley Quinn. Which, you know, growing up with the animated series, I was really looking forward to seeing this. And that's what I thought this movie was going to be. I thought it was going to be the Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship, and this whole thing with Deadshot getting involved in Killer Croc, and I thought we were going to get like a really good movie with these characters well balanced out, and, and it was probably going to open up doors for more movies and more ideas of what the DC Universe could do and what, what they can do with all these characters, not just the villains, but the heroes as well. And we don't get that. What this movie is, is Deadshot and Harley Quinn helping out Rick Flagg save June Moon from being taken over by Enchantress, who is the villain in this movie. That's the movie! That's the movie. And I'm not saying that's a bad plot. It's just that once the second act starts and they go into Gotham and they're trying to find, you know, this portal hole that's opening, like I said, Ghostbusters, because Enchantress has pretty much taken over the whole city, I guess, and opened up this giant porthole. I mean, like it was so, like I like I kept waiting for Zool to come in, and <laughs> like it, it was it was Ghostbusters, and but but it just kept going on and on and on, and they're just walking through through Gotham and. You know, occasionally we, we get a good action scene, and occasionally we get another flashback, and we get a little, you know, we get into their backstories and everything, but it just felt like, 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 like they had the ingredients there to make this movie work, but it could have been so much better. I'm not saying this movie is terrible. It's not. It's good. It, it, it is good. It has really good thing, a lot of good ingredients in this movie. But it could have been better, guys. I mean, you you watch the trailer and, and you really want it to succeed. You really do. But it it has problems. It just does. Um, okay. These characters are not well balanced. You see Killer Croc there and he looks great. You see Diablo there, he looks great. You see Captain Boomerang, he looks great. They barely get their moments in here. I mean, Captain Boomerang, he's got a couple of funny lines here and there, and when he does deliver, it's pretty good. But Killer Croc's just standing there, looking all, you know, scary and shit, and ready to go, and he, and he takes a few punches and stuff. But he's barely in it. I mean, like, he doesn't even get his... He doesn't get a moment in this. Not really. We don't know anything about him. We know a few things about Katana. I mean, like, like, like... You know, we know that her sword has her husband in there, and it possesses the souls of, you know, the deceased that get killed 
with her with her sword, but that's it. You don't know much about her, and I know we're probably going to learn more as this as this DC universe thing goes on, but I mean, here's the thing. I will say this. In one movie to introduce all these characters, you know what? It, it it's pretty tricky. It's pretty tricky to balance all that out. But I think you could do it. For for a 2-hour movie, 2-hour and 10-minute movie, I think this is. I think you could do it. But we don't get that. Like like I, I think Will Smith gets got way too much screen time more than anyone. And Margot Robbie got just just as much, and that's it. You like you, like Jared Leto was barely in this. He's only in this movie for maybe six scenes. That's it. And now here's the thing. I knew that going into this movie. I knew that going in, so I was expecting that because I heard what the critics had said about this movie already. So I was expecting it. Um, but when he's on screen with her, oh, it, it's great. There was one moment where I literally almost shrieked because it took me right back to when I was a kid and I watched the animated series. You notice how Harley Quinn uh, doesn't look like the character from the animated series, which I will say this. Margot Robbie, she did her homework. She is doing an impression of Harley Quinn from the animated series, and it's perfect. It's perfect. And... There's a, there's a scene, it's in the beginning when Amanda Waller is, is explaining, you know, I finally found them, the worst of the worst. You know, that whole scene. She's explaining the backstories of all these criminals, and she's talking about, and she gets to Harley Quinn, and she's talking about her, and you see the flashbacks. But it's like, it's like that. Like, you see her with the Joker, you see her, you know, being his therapist, and you know, doing all that, and and you also see the clip, you know, I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad. You know, you see all that, but it's only for, like, a couple of minutes. Like, that flashback, that was the movie I was looking forward to seeing. And it just gets tossed aside, you know? But there was a moment in that flashback when you see the Joker and Harley dancing together, and... Jared has the black suit on with the makeup, and Margot Robbie is in the court jester outfit from the animated series. And I saw that, and I'm like, I couldn't believe it. That was just so cool to see. It took me right back to the animated series. I'm like, oh, animated series right there. Like, I, oh, God, that was great. That was great to see that. And, and when they are together on screen, it's good. It's really good. I wanted to see more of that. That's what I wanted to see. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the um, I, I thought the music was really good. Oh, the songs were really good. They were really good. I don't want to give away what songs are in this movie, but let's just say, like, as soon as the movie starts, you're going to be hooked with the music. It's It was that good. Um, I'm trying to think of what else to say about this movie. Other than the fact that Jared Leto and Margot Robbie were good. I mean, Will Smith Will Smith was good. He was good. I mean, like, I, I, I really enjoyed his backstory as Deadshot, you know, you know, with him and his daughter and everything. And, uh, and Batman's in the movie, too. Yep, Ben Affleck is in this movie. But he's only in this movie for, like, two cameos, and then that's it. Because, again, it's, it's, not, it's not about Batman this time. It's about the villains this time. Uh... There is an end credit scene, but it's not after the credits. It's like mid credits, you know. Uh, and uh, and I don't want to give away what that is, cause if anyone's a fan, like like you might want to check check out that check that out. Uh, now what do I think of Jared Leto as the Joker? I thought he was great. I thought he was great. He wasn't Heath Ledger great, in my opinion. It's Heath Ledger, Mark Hamill. And Jack Nicholson. And I would say... I would put Jared Leto in between Hamill and Nicholson. I would say. Now, I think there's a couple more Jokers that, that are, are, are out there that I probably aren't a, don't know about. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I thought... I, I, I didn't think it was over the top, Jared Leto. I mean, like, okay, maybe like once or twice it can come off as kind of embarrassing the way he delivers lines, but 
there are times when he's when he looks pretty good and he sounds good and and the laugh i mean like he only does the laugh like one time in the movie like i said he's barely in this people thought i, I thought he was going to be like the main star of this movie cuz everyone was looking forward to seeing Jared Leto in this um and he's more like a supporting character in this movie which again i'm not against but it's just like 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 like, like the movie was good Oh, God, it could have been so much better. It could have been so much better. But you know what? Compared to Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, this is the best one. This is the best one. I mean, I can't judge Batman vs. Superman because I haven't seen it, but a lot of people said it sucked. And I hated Man of Steel. So I'm guessing, uh, th this is a good educated guess, that Suicide Squad is probably the best so far. And I think this is why the critics are giving it negative reviews. I think they want I think they were expecting exactly what I was expecting, exactly what all of you fanboys and fangirls out there were expecting, and we didn't get it. Um we kind of got it, but not quite. You know what I mean? So like I said, don't don't pay attention to the advertisement because it's not the movie you're going to get. It's going to be somewhat, but not not really. Um, I, and you know, for what this movie was, I did enjoy it. I did. I didn't hate it. I didn't, I don't think it's terrible. It, it's not a bad movie. It's just not living up to the expectation we thought it was going to be. It was good. It was good. I, I, I enjoyed it. There were pieces of this movie that I loved, and the rest of it was just, okay, it was good. You know, like, that's pretty much where I stand on this movie. So, uh... I'm looking forward to it. If they ever make another movie that ties into this with their backstories or anything like that, I really hope we get that Joker Harley Quinn movie. I would love to see a movie where, and I know the backstory because I saw the animated series. So I, I and I and I also like I know how their relationship started. But still, we haven't seen that in a live action film yet. At least I haven't. So. I don't know, like, 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 when I saw those flashbacks, I really wanted to see more of that. And I did want to see more of the other members of the Suicide Squad, because most of them just get thrown under the rug, you know, like, 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 they're just there, and that's it, you know, so, I, I don't know. But, uh, now I would say, now I have to say who would like it and who wouldn't like it, um... If you're a fan of DC, or if you're just a superhero fan, or supervillain fan in general, you'll probably enjoy this, but if you've been watching the trailers and the advertisement for it, and the movie you think you're going to get, it's not there. Just bits and pieces of it are. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts on Suicide Squad. <laughs> and uh, if you're wondering why it took me so long to do a review, because I think the last review I did was Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping. That movie bombed at the box office, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why, that movie was hysterical, but, uh, yeah, I've been busy with work, but, uh, I'll probably be doing new reviews. There's a lot of movies coming out in August. We got War Dogs, we got, uh, Don't Breathe, we got Sausage Party. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, yes, I am. And I know there's gonna be a lot of little kids coming into that one. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, it's a rated R Seth Rogen animated comedy. Yeah, of course. Little, little kids are going to show up to that. Oh, that's going to be funny to watch. That's going to be fun. So, uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on Suicide Squad. Hope you guys enjoyed this. See you later.